I remember the day I met Tisa Michaels. I looked up and I saw this beautiful woman staring back at me and I asked her what she was doing here and she said I, I, I'd like to be in this gallery. I asked her did you actually have any of your work? Can I see any of your work? And she said yes I have it and I looked at it and it was just wonderful. It was different, it was unusual and it was beautiful and well done. But there was something so special about it um, that it, it kind of took my breath away. It stopped my heart from beating regularly and it started to do something different. And I was completely and utterly amazed and speechless about it. And I thought to myself, I am so grateful and so fortunate to have met this person. She is an entity of all of her own. And that's why I chose her, is that we had no one like her and nothing like it. And, and for a lot of people, it's perfect for them. And the best part, the best part about Tisa Michaels' work is Tisa Michaels. She's just really wonderful. I'm Tisa Michaels, and I am a mixed-media, semi-precious stone artist, and I also incorporate precious stones into my work as well. And I gather my stones from all around the world from many different collectors. My series is called Element Series, of bringing elements of the earth into my paintings in that way. I think an artist is really who I am. It's really to the core of who I am, and it's really my, you know, that inner being. And that was something I resonated with very young, where I did my first oil painting with my mom. It was Bob Ross style, you know, happy trees and mountains, when I was about 12, and then went to art college and continued on as an art director for a while. And fine art was always something that I really resonated with, whether it was painting or drawing, but I picked up oils, and that really became my passion. And so my mom is the one who actually was the one that got me started incorporating the semi-precious stones into my work. She's the one that does the jewelry. And so her and I would go to the huge um, gem and mineral shows for her jewelry. And so I started collecting the stones myself. And she one day said, why don't you start incorporating into your work? So I started with one piece of agate and I put one piece of agate on a canvas and you know it stayed and it was okay. And then um, I got some of my other pieces that I was collecting with her throughout the years out and started to kind of lay them out on the table as I did and saw them in such a grand way of them all being together. So it was something that started to evolve then, starting from one small piece of agate to now, my largest piece is four foot by six foot and 105 pounds of about 70 pounds of amethyst that's on it. It's been a labor of love, I think, both for mom and I, because we both get to go find the stones and collect them in that way and use them and incorporate them now into the series that I'm currently doing. And I've also been able to do precious stones as well. On one of my commissions, I've used diamonds and rubies, so that was a lot of fun. And, and at first, you know, I thought, oh, the diamonds are kind of overrated. You know, I use quartz, I use so much of the white stones. And oh, they were faceted diamonds. And once I put them on there and, you know, the light hit them, they are not overrated. Rated. It was just beautiful. It was a brilliant piece. I was very fortunate to be able to use those. Sometimes I'm really inspired by the stones themselves and so I will see a certain stone um, and get it from one of my collectors and that'll inspire then what I paint and put on the canvas that way. Sometimes I'll take a picture myself of a landscape because that is my favorite thing to paint and the beautiful sunsets, that's definitely my favorite thing. And then I will take the coordinating stones to that piece. I had people keep telling me, with the stones that you use, you need to go to Sedona. And uh, I've taken some of the Sedona rock and incorporated it into my paintings, and then added some other semi-precious stones that kind of mirror that. What Marty and Diane have done in this gallery is just fantastic because every inch of this gallery is an amazing piece of art. Marty has encouraged me so much, and I think one thing that he has really done is not limited me an uplifting freedom, you know, to really be who I am as an artist and that that, again, what my angle, if you will, on art is there is no limit. So he creates that kind of no ceiling for me and, and such encouragement, which I've really appreciated. And to be one of those people to kind of come up with something new, that is the number one comment I get is I've never seen anything like it. And I get that all the time and I'm so blessed and so humbled when somebody says that. Unfortunately, I almost lost my life to Lyme disease a few years ago, and I think that since then, I have really pulled so much passion from that experience. So right now, I have so much enthusiasm and so much passion to do this. I really feel that art needs to make a statement, and that's what I really want my pieces to do. I want it to invoke an emotion, 
to pull out a feeling because I want my work that you see in the gallery to touch you in that way and then when you put it in your home to have that same effect. So every time you wake up, you're gonna see that. Every time you're in your home, you're gonna have that and see it. Plus the stones resonate throughout your whole, your whole home as well. So that is something that's huge for me to art to really make a statement. I've had people cry in front of my work. I've had people really um, be so moved. And I think the beauty of it is they're feeling those stones. They're feeling the energy. They're feeling their essence and their spirit come into that as well.